Are you good on height with Is it here? It's here. Okay. It's here again. <laughs> it cuts off right under the sign, so <laughs> Y'all, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for being out here to uh, be able to uh, talk about this extremely important issue. Thank you to all of you who do so much to be able to help so many people around the country. This conversation is about charitable giving. Now, that's not a radical concept for us as Americans. We're very passionate about doing what we can to be able to help those that are around us. For all of us in Oklahoma, there are tornadoes that came through our state this past weekend, and there are communities all over Oklahoma that are stepping up, churches, nonprofits, all kinds of entities, neighbors that are engaging to be able to help. The safety net in America oftentimes is misnamed. People will talk about the government safety net. I'll smile at them when I hear someone say that and say the safety net in America is first our families, our neighbors and our community. Second is gonna be those nonprofits, faith-based institutions, all kinds of institutions that are out there that actually engage to be able to help. And third is government. Government can never keep up with all the needs that we have as Americans. We're not even designed to be able to do that. If families struggle and our nonprofits struggle, we're going to struggle as a nation. Our nation is built on the strength of our families and of our nonprofits. So the Charitable Giving Act that we have is encouraging Americans to stay engaged and to do what we love to be able to do. That's to be able to serve, and to be able to give. Currently, our tax code is written in such a way that only the wealthy get any kind of benefit from giving financially to nonprofits. We want to spread that out to everybody. There are lots of folks that are non-itemizers that give faithfully and would give even more if they knew it would be an offset there and they could engage with their taxes. With our tax code, we're talking about encouraging people to do what they love to do already, help people in need. That is something that makes a difference in our real communities, and I'm proud to be able to stand here with all these folks that do it every single day and that are also standing with us to be able to encourage more folks to be able to both give and to be able to serve, to be able to volunteer their time, and to be able to make a difference in their communities. I'm also proud to be able to stand here with my friend Chris Coons, that we've worked on this together. We see eye to eye on many issues, actually, and some we do not. Let's talk about those that we do today. And that is this fact about charitable giving. So I want to hand this over to my friend, uh, Chris Coons from Delaware. Thank you, James. Give him a round of applause, would you please? Danny and I love James and Cindy. I enjoy serving with him um, and uh, sharing both about our family's journeys and about the opportunities we have to make a difference. Yes, there's a lot of Mondays where we come to the floor and we go like this, yeah. like this, yeah. and then smile about the fact that we're not voting the same way. But we also spend time asking each other about our families, about our communities. And as James just said, those are the foundations of our society. I don't know about you, but I was raised with the phrase uh, that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And one of the things that has defined our nation since its earliest days is that we are a remarkably philanthropic, engaged, community-spirited people, more so than any of the countries of the rest of the world. In fact, a young man, Alexis de Tocqueville, who came from Europe to the United States and traveled all up and down this young nation in the 1830s and then wrote a book, Democracy in America, about it, observed that that was the secret sauce of the American Republic, was this dynamism, this enthusiasm for creating things, whether it was volunteer fire companies or yeah, community just, lending yeah. libraries, whether it was coming together to help raise a barn for a neighbor or it was coming together to help strengthen 
with a community uh, where someone had suffered through a disaster. We've got some amazing folks behind me, as you just heard. Angela Williams, the United Way Worldwide, Ken Hodder from the Salvation Army, uh, Anthony Walters, originally from Wilmington, Delaware, ladies and gentlemen, um, who will speak. Um, I'm just going to be brief here in saying we've reintroduced the Charitable Act. Um, this is a way to give some extra recognition and incentive to those um, who are often already giving, but who were at the end of the year as they talk to their accountant or as a couple they talk or as they talk to an important community organization, this gives them some extra recognition and incentive to do the charitable giving they're often already motivated to do. Americans gave $450 billion to charities in 2022. And that distributed giving, that local giving, that individual and engaged giving is a key part of what builds and sustains American communities. So I'm thrilled to have a chance to work with James on this again. I'm perfectly optimistic that we will find a path to the president's desk and I appreciate the leadership and the capacity for good of all the organizations behind me. And if you happen to work for a senator who has not yet joined this is uh, a good day. the co-sponsors, this is a great day to join us in saying that this is exactly the sort of bipartisan effort that should make all of us proud to be American. Thank you. And I would like to introduce next, if I could, forgive me, Angela Williams, who's president and CEO of United Way Worldwide. Uh, who oversees United Way's global network, serving nearly 50 million people across 37 countries. She is returning today uh, to the Senate side as a former staffer to Senator Kennedy. Angela? Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone, and I want to say thank you to Senators Lankford and Coons for inviting me to be here, be here with all of you today in support of such very, very important legislation. Generosity and charitable giving are fundamental parts of our American identity. That's why United Way Worldwide is proud to support this bipartisan uh, bill, Charitable Act, which will make it easier for Americans to give to the charitable causes they support in a time of historic need. United Way Worldwide is a global network of neighbors helping neighbors. We are on the ground in 95% of communities in the United States, which means that we are on the very front lines of addressing community needs. Whether we're helping feed families, provide access to education and health care, or responding when disaster strikes, we bring people together to build strong, equitable communities where everyone can thrive. To do that, we rely on the generous donations of everyday Americans across the United States. And although tax policy is rarely the reason why Americans choose to support charities they believe in, making it easier and more affordable to do so can have a powerful ripple effect that will make our country and communities stronger. That's why I am so very proud to support this bipartisan charitable act, which will allow the overwhelming majority of taxpayers who do not itemize their taxes to claim a deduction for the income they donate and raise the cap on that deduction from $300 for individuals and $600 for joint filers to approximately $4,600 for individuals and $9,200 for joint filers. This kind of expansion of the universal charitable deduction will make it easier for all Americans to give. Our tax laws are designed to incentivize choices that are good for all of us, like home ownership and business investment. And it's time for Congress to do the same with charitable giving. So let's make it as easy as possible for Americans to strengthen the communities that they care about, that they live in, and build a better future for generations to come. With your ongoing support, nonprofits like ours can continue working to ensure good health, a good education, and social mobility for every person in every community. Thank you so much for allowing me 
to be a very important part of this effort. Thank you. Thank you. Not bad for a Senate staffer coming up. <laughs> Next, I want to be able to introduce Anthony Walters to be able to come and to be able to come share as well. I'd also like to thank Senator Langford and Senator Coons for their ongoing support of the nonprofit sector and their recognition that tax policy really does make a difference when it comes to an individual's decision to donate to charity. Ask any nonprofit department about the influx of donations that come in at the end of the year. The non itemizer deduction that was enacted in 2020 to encourage donations to nonprofits to help blunt the burden of reduced revenue during the first year of the pandemic was indeed successful. According to the Fundraising Effectiveness Project, the number of donors increased overall by 7.3%, with the largest increases coming from those giving $250 or less. But it is critically important that we continue the non-itemizer reduction to help build a culture of charitable giving in our communities at all income levels. Continuing this trend at WISE and other nonprofits across the country into the future. For example, the YMC of, of Southampton Roads felt a tremendous pain in the pandemic, only soothed by the generosity of kind local YMCA membership base. Our members had the option during that specific moment in time to convert their membership dues to donations to help our Y remain financially solvent during a time frame where we were only able to provide childcare in lieu of our full breadth of programs and services. We were extremely grateful for an ability to present charitable giving to our membership base during our time of critical need. The importance of our non-itemizer deduction is illustrated by its broad support among the nonprofit sector. The Charitable Giving Coalition, a diverse group representing thousands of charitable and faith-based organizations, including the Y, has long advocated for a universal charitable deduction that makes it easier for all taxpayers to give. Not only is it good for tax policy, but it provides a way for individuals to connect with causes they care about, and it enables nonprofits who provide critical services in their communities to reach more people and improve lives. Since the beginning of the pandemic, communities have grown and charities have stepped up even when they are in position having to do more with less. The non-itemizer deduction will uh, both help grow the number of individuals able to give to organizations that are strengthening communities and generate desperately needed resources for those organizations who are feeling the impact of the inflation we all know so well. Raising money is hard. I can tell you that very directly. Every tool we have at our disposal to increase our resources means that we can feed more hungry kids, check in on more seniors experiencing social isolation, help more families impacted by disasters, provide more mentors for teens, offer health and well-being programs to more individuals, and be there for our communities in whatever way that they need us. The Charitable Act will provide a much needed tool that will benefit every community we serve across the country. The Y is so grateful for Senator Lankford and Coons, for their other colleagues and other colleagues across uh, this hill here today, who have continued to be champions for the universal charitable deduction and other policies that make America stronger with the help of individual donors, the YMCA, and other nonprofits. We're grateful and we thank you. So uh, last thing, we'll take just a brief couple of questions after this. Colonel Rob Bukowitz, and uh, you're breaking our list of our A's here. So we had an Angela and an Anthony, and now we have a Ralph coming. So yeah, <laughs> thank you. This is uh, from uh, Salvation Army as well. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Senator Langford, Senator Coons. It's an honor to be here with you today, with all those who are distingu distinguished guests as well including the fellow national nonprofit organizational leaders, spotlighting the value of empowering Americans to support their communities through charitable giving. I'm grateful to lend our voice 
to underscore the impact of charitable giving on nonprofit organizations strengthening our neighbors in communities across the country. The Salvation Army's mission is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and to meet human needs in his name without discrimination. And we do that with love and compassion at more than 7,200 locations across the United States. We serve people who come to us for assistance according to their needs and our capacity to help. The ongoing economic hardships from the COVID pandemic, unemployment, evictions, lack of affordable housing, and inflation have left many individuals and families fighting to meet basic needs. Likewise, the Salvation Army's expenses to shelter and feed the most vulnerable have also increased. Some Salvation Army locations have experienced increased costs anywhere from 10 to 50%. Despite these challenges last year, the Salvation Army served over 25 million people right here in the United States. Our programs help clients break the cycles of poverty, deal with domestic abuse, addiction, isolation, homelessness, and more. We served 7 million people in response to natural disaster, providing over 171 million meals to individuals and families experiencing food insecurity and provided rent and utility assistance to over 3 million households. Each of these lives changed, numbering in the millions, are made possible because of the generosity of the American public. The Bipartisan Charitable Act would encourage the American public to continue giving back to neighbors and communities in need. We believe this is to be true because the largest digital fundraising day of the year for the Salvation Army is December 31st. We know that those who support charitable programs also feel the pains of inflation, and this act will allow and incentivize them to continue helping others during these challenging times. Thank you again, Senator Lankford, Senator Coons, for making this a priority. I pray that this and other efforts will continue to encourage the American public to come alongside organizations that are doing the most good. Thank you. We will take a couple of brief questions. We would like to ask that they stay on topic for this particular topic, and we'll run the same rule as we normally do. I'll take the easy questions. Chris will take the hard ones. <laughs> so, be straightforward, Alex. Senator, do you have any estimate about how much this could increase giving, charitable giving? Yeah, so it's, it's interesting. Uh, when, when people are given the opportunity to be able to write off this on their taxes, uh, people give on their own, but they also give a little more when they know it's going to also, also offset their taxes. As was just mentioned by Ralph, a lot of folks say, well, people just give out of the goodness of their hearts because they're Americans. We go also look at how many people give in December. Uh, it's not just the Christmas spirit that people are giving in December. They also know it's the end of the year for their tax season. So there are some estimates that are in the single digits that are some estimates that are much, much higher than that. Uh, it's hard to be able to get a good read on it. And quite frankly, Chris and I have for years worked with the IRS to try to give a good, accurate accounting of this to be able to tell. But we do know it does make a difference when people have the opportunity to be able to write off on their taxes. They are incentivized to be able to give more. And if we're going to talk about the effectiveness of government or the first-hand engagement of nonprofits, nonprofits are people that are actually looking them in the face, mentoring, helping, walking through it. Government is effective at sending a check. These folks are effective at actually mentoring and walking people through a difficult stage of life. They're going to be more effective to take care of the same thing. Every one of the organizations behind us um, is engaged in fundraising day in and day out. They've got folks who are development professionals who are out there in our communities asking people to be supportive. And they are convinced, and I am convinced, we are convinced, we are. Uh, that most of the giving in America comes from the heart. But at the end of the year, when a family knows its budget, they know how much is coming in, how much is going out, and they sit down and look at what they're going to owe in taxes and what they can give. They will often give just a little bit more, even significantly more, particularly if there is a tax incentive, particularly for those who don't itemize. So I think this is a well-targeted proposal that could significantly increase giving. I also think if you ask the nonprofit leaders behind us, they'll tell you that folks who give are also often more engaged. They also often volunteer. 
They also often recommend services to family, to friends, to their community. So often when folks donate to a nonprofit, they also feel a sense of connection or investment that then has secondary positive benefits as well. Any questions? All right, I'm not going to belabor it. These folks are busy on it. So y'all, thanks for coming out and being a part of this. And go find a senator, give him a hug, and tell him to support charitable giving. Okay. <laughs>